and dolls welcome back today I'm gonna to be doing a demo with the Gwen Stefani palette now as you guys know I love this palette I'm not gonna mind words about it however you can recreate this look with other products this is really about the technique of how I'm applying the makeup it's a sandwich smoky eye that is not my typical sandwich smoky eye which in my opinion and in sort of like a poetic manner I feel like a lot of times when I do a smoky a sandwich smoky eye particularly um, I'm doing like a grand gesture it's a lot of makeup it's bold it's very in your face and it's very clear what I'm doing with the makeup with this It's a more subtler take on that same concept and It creates more of a contouring to the eye than it does just act as like a super sexy smoky nighttime You know makeup look so I wanted to do something that was a little bit different in that same vein and kind of show you how to use that Technique in a different way the other thing that I want to mention is that if you do not have the Gwen Stefani palette but you have the Naked Basics 2, or if you want to save money and get this one, which is a little bit less expensive. Stark is obviously in the palette. Frisk is almost a dead ringer for Anaheim. And then you can use whatever shimmer colors you have from whatever palette, just to kind of give you an idea of the fact that this is more about the technique. Although I am using this palette because I do like it. I've already applied all my eyebrow and all that nice, neat stuff, but I'm going to do my brow highlight now on camera for you. I switch it up. Sometimes I use concealer under here. Sometimes I don't put anything on at all. But since I'm using such light colors, I want to really make sure that that area is highlighted. But I'm also not going to go like full Monty and use like a you know hardcore like concealer because that's just a little bit too much. You know, it won't be in balance with the rest of the look. So I'm going to just take a brush and blend that out. It just sort of cleans up the underbrow area and adds a little nice natural highlight. And just a little tiny bit of it right there on the inner underbrow. Now I'm going to use my NARS Smudge Proof Pro Prime. This stuff is excellent. I think I might be running a little low on it though. That's a sad story. That's a sad story. So I'm gonna sweep this on. I don't necessarily have like one particular brush I like for smudging these out. I just kind of grab one at random. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up Stark from the palette. This is a really silky very light flesh tone type color. It's incredibly smooth and silky. It looks so great as a nice transitional color. So that's how I'm going to use it today. I'm going to start it out on my inner crease area. I'm just going to really rock this in my socket line. It's all throughout. And I'm going to blend that up towards where I'm going to place the highlight color. Think of this color as like a lighter version of like Makeup Geek Peach Smoothie, which is amazing and I love it. And I use it all the time. But sometimes it's a little bit too orange and a little too, you know, announcing itself whereas this one is just very naturalistic really just creates that illusion of a deeper crease for my hooded eyelids now for my highlight today while I would love to just use something from this palette for me uh, blonde is just way too shimmery to use as a highlight in my opinion I just don't really like an under brown under brow <laughs> frosty highlight I said under brown I'm kind of channeling gold pinkster right there with <laughs> the eyebrows imp is absolutely gorgeous beautiful sort of like natural satin finish but when all the other eyeshadows on the lid are shimmery I like to sort of have a balance so today I'm going to use a matte highlight I'm going to be using walk of shame from urban decay this is from the original naked basics palette so see, I'm just trying to like keep it all in the family today. So I apply that underneath my brow and blend it out. Nothing terribly exciting, but it's definitely an important step to a look. I think it depends on what kind of eyeshadow. I mean, if you're going like super subtle, you don't have to do a brow highlight. But since this will have eyeshadow everywhere else, I think it's nice to texturally just have eyeshadow from lashes to brows. Now I'm going to pick up Anaheim, which is a beautiful grayish brown, and this is my bronze blending brush from Furless. And this brush has a pinched ferrule, so I'm picking up the product on one side, so I picked it up, flip it over. That way it only gets deposited into my crease area, and I'm slightly digging in. You can see I'm like exerting a little bit of pressure and sort of shoving that into or onto my eyelid sort of behind my eyeball. This creates some delineation between the crease and then the lid but it's soft enough that it doesn't create a line of demarcation like if we were doing, for instance, like a cut crease, you would want to you know, come in with something like a flat brush and sort of really map that out and make it nice and tight. This, we're just sort of blending it in a soft way, but we do want that line of definition there. Moving on to the eyelid, I'm going to pick up Baby. The first couple times I tried this look, I was using St Steady, which 
for some reason I thought they were the same. City is definitely more of like a peachy, tan, skin tone fleshy type color, whereas Baby is much more of an icy rose. The icy rose ends up looking better, I think, with the burgundy and just the overall effect that I'm going for. So today we're using Baby. And I'm going to place this all over the eyelid. Oh, this color is so good. I love it. I just, I'm, I'm placing this all over the mobile lid. Get it nice and soft. Love. Really start to make this thing pop. I'm going to take Punk from this palette. Just a beautiful burgundy brown. Tap off the excess. This is really important because you don't want too much product on the brush. And I'm going to start on the inner corner here. This is kind of tricky because I don't want my finger to be in the way. So I take the brush and I'm almost like dragging it up from the lash line there. And I'm just going to squeeze it up a bit in, into like the inner crease here. It's almost like creating like a big sloppy V, if you will. I'm going to take our blending brush from earlier. And I'm just going to blend the crap out of that right in towards the center of the lid. Now we're not going to take the color super far, but that's the direction we're going. We're not trying to blend it out onto the nose. And then on the outer crease, we're going to do a similar technique. I'm going to sort of curve it a little bit. And I don't want the placement of the color to be any wider than the brush itself. And slightly feather it over. By the way, this brush I'm using is a Delium Tools 712, and I love it. This is the first look I've used it with. I was very impressed with it. So then again, just sort of squeeps and blend that out. And the effect is very subtle. Okay, let me zoom it in. While the effect is subtle, can you see the difference in my two eyes? Can you see how this eye looks so much larger? The center portion of it is definitely protruding forward. It just adds a nice contour to the eye. It gives it a little more of a larger shape. Whereas this one, while well, it looks fine, just this one looks a little more complete. The final step is to add eyeliner, and I'm only going to add eyeliner about halfway in the inner corner, to the center part of the lid, and then again on the outer portion, the same way. So we're totally skipping this very innermost portion so that that part of the eye can really pop. So we already have an eye that's definitely popping in the center, but we're just going to really enhance that and really drive it home. So I'm going to pick up Blonde from the palette, which is a very, very light, kind of a yellow cream color with a bit of a pink flash. But the it's all very subtle. It's actually more matte than Baby. And so that little textural shift mixed with the fact that it is lighter creates a really cool popping highlight right there in the center portion of the lid. Almost like a glossy eye. And again, we don't want this wider than the width of the brush that we're using. So now that I have all my foundation and junk on, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the eyes. The first order of business is to curl my lashes with my new Tarte Lash Curler. I'm not sure if I feel about this one. I feel like maybe it's not really squeezing my eyelashes. My lashes are curled. I'm going to go ahead and put on my mascara. You know what? I kind of feel like, well, no, I won't wear lashes today. I was kind of thinking about wearing false lashes, but I think that I'd like to photograph this look without fake lashes on to really show what it looks like. So we're just going to do mascara. For my blush today I kind of feel like going with something luxurious. So I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek in First Love. I'm going to place this right on the apples of my cheeks and work it back. This is a Wayne Goss. This was originally the holiday brush and they made this permanent. So kind of cool. So now it's called the Zero Zero brush. Love this. Okay. So for highlights today, I'm going to be using my Hourglass palette. This is just the original highlight palette that they did. I know they came out with like a mega mega one. Uh, this is incandescent light that I'm using. And I'm placing this almost like just right under my eye right here. Like so. I'm just using a furless brush to apply this. 
I start like kind of almost like wiggle and then I'll sort of take longer strokes to make sure it's blended and doesn't look like I just put highlight just in that one spot so it look kind of weird. Um, and then I think I'm also going to take a little my nose and then a little bit my chin. I just realized that I didn't put anything on my lower lash line, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to pick up Stomper from ColourPop and my Delium Tools 762, and I'm going to draw that right under my lower lash line. This is my first time using this, so I wasn't sure how dark it was going to be. It's a little darker than I wanted, so I'm going to pick up a Q-tip. Just smudge that out. I know my monthly faves, I talked about how my Esom Q-tips are my favorite because they're small and detailed, and that's true. I do like them for other applications, but for something like smudging out the lower lash line, sometimes you need the larger cotton bud. For my inner room, I'm going to use Feathered from OCC, which is my favorite white inner room color. And I'm going to pull that down just a little bit on the this outside the inner rim, blend it, or lips. Oh, this one's hard. What do I wear on my lips with this? Originally, I wore ho ho ho, but I'm filming another video in a minute. I need a mirror to apply this. So hopefully, my mirror is out of your view. The great thing about the Jeffree Star with the lipsticks is if you do go a little outside the line, they clean up really nicely with the Q-tip if you get it right away. I say as I mess it up more, of course, of course. And then the final step whenever I'm doing like a red lip particularly, but this is good advice for any kind of bold lip, is to take your face powder, something that's tinted hopefully, and a brush like this. Now this one's from Sonia Kashuk, and unfortunately this one is discontinued, which is a big fat bummer. We can go to the craft store and get a similarly large angled brush. What I do is I pick it up on my, in my pack, compact, and then sort of edge it out like that. Very subtle. But it definitely makes a crisper edge. This is the completed look. The skin is overall pretty natural. I didn't show the whole face application, but I did use my Color Me for the foundation, which I don't think I've done on, you know, for a tutorial or anything before. I've always just done it in private and sort of tested it out in that way. And oh my geez, does my foundation look freaking on point today. I did use a different powder, which is a little bit drying. I used the Cameo Ben Nye powder, which is a little bit on the drier side. And I'm, I'm noticing like on places like my chin, it's looking a little tiny bit dry. Nothing to write home about, nothing to like, you know, wash it all off and reapply it or anything, but it's just something I'm noticing. You know, when you try out different products, you're sort of like, okay, maybe those two don't really work together that well. Um, so if you want to see a full list of what I used for my foundation and everything, that will be at vintageyourtacky.com, along with photos of this look. Be sure to check out my review of the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipsticks, which will go up a day or two before this. And that's it. I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you in my next video. Remember, be vintage or tacky. Just be yourself. See you. Bye.